Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to make black body radiation. And then I'm going to be using that to show you that energy states are actually quantized. Meaning that energy can't take on any value specifically, but it only has specific values that it can be. So this is my theoretical black body. What this is, it's a body that absorbs 100% of the radiation that hits it. So it absorbs everything. Now the thing with black body radiators like this is that they look black at room temperature. But if you heat them up, they don't actually look black. So I'm going to heat this up to at least 750 degrees Celsius. So what we'll see is it start to turn from black to a dark red to a brighter red. So it's going to start emitting visible light, something that was black, we heat it up and it starts to emit a visible light. Okay, let's start heating it up. And you can see it change color. So look at it go from black, that dark red to that brighter red. So this is extremely hot. So now that we know what a black body radiator is, let me show you how I made my black body radiator. This is just a box with a hole in it, painted black inside. So there's my hole. So any light that is coming into this is absorbed because it bounces around inside of the box and it's very unlikely that that light will come out. So it almost absorbs anything that goes into it. There's a tiny little bit that escapes, but for all intents and purposes, this is a perfect black body radiator. And the way I heated it up is I stuck this black plate in here, this metal plate, and then I heated that up. And that is what we saw escaping here. So the only reason we could see anything coming out of it is because it was being heated from inside and that light was able to escape outward. It turns out that no matter what your black body is made out of, if you heat it up, it will always glow at the same temperatures. Now, I wasn't able to get mine to a very high temperature. I probably got it to around 700 degrees Celsius. But if I could get it to a higher temperature, then it wouldn't just glow bright red anymore, but it would actually start to glow yellow and orange. And if I heat it up even more to around 1300 degrees Celsius, then it would become yellowish white. And the reason it starts glowing white at 1300 degrees Celsius is because you have red light, but then you added the medium range light, the mid frequency light, and then you added the high frequency light, like blue light in there. So when you have the low, medium, and high frequency light all together, that makes white light. You basically have the entire visible spectrum being emitted, and so it looks white. If you look at the entire electromagnetic spectrum, you'll notice that visible light is not where it ends. If you keep going up in energy, after visible light, you'll get to ultraviolet light. And from there, you'll even get to X-rays and then even gamma rays. So that would mean if we follow the same trend and we were to plot the intensity of light, intensity is related to energy. It's the energy per second per area. So this is the intensity of light versus the frequency. Then based on what we just saw, as you heat something up, the energy goes up we would expect a plot that looks something like this. So basically the more energy there is, the higher frequency of light that comes off of it. So according to classical mechanics, if we keep heating our black body radiator up, it should start to emit a lot of UV light and even X-rays and then gamma rays. But it turns out that's not actually what happens. This is what it actually looks like. So you can see that these two don't agree with each other. Classical physics predicted that the graph should look like this, but if you really measure it, it looks like this. So something is wrong here. And this is called the ultraviolet catastrophe. And the reason they named it that is because it would predict that if you just heat something up, you should see a lot of ultraviolet light coming off of it, when in reality, you don't. So why is it that these two don't match each other? If you say that any atom in your black body radiator can have any energy, then you end up with an equation like this, which is B, which is just kind of another term for intensity. It's called spectral radiation. You have B equals the frequency squared times two times Boltzmann's constant times temperature over the speed of light squared. So this is the equation that makes your plot look like this, where it kind of just goes off into infinity. But then a physicist named Planck came along and out of the blue, just to get his math to fit the realistic equation that looked like this, 
he said, well, what if we just don't let the atom have any energy that we want? What if it only has these quantized level of energy? So it can only have these certain energies. If we do that, then this equation becomes this equation. And it turns out that if you only let the energy of the atom have certain values, then what you end up with is a plot that matches real life instead of this fake thing where it just goes off into infinity. And this is now known as Planck's law. And it turns out he didn't have any real physical reason for doing this. He was just trying to get his equation to match what we see in real life. So before they used to think that when a photon hit an atom, it caused the atom to vibrate kind of like a ball on a spring. It would just vibrate back and forth at any frequency. So they said that that ball could have any frequency. But then Einstein came along and he said, well, what's happening is the atom isn't actually vibrating. We know that the atom has a nucleus and around it are some electrons. And when a photon comes in and hits the electron, it pushes the electron up to a higher energy state. And then that electron falls back down that energy state and releases that photon again. So Einstein was later able to prove the reason why we had to put those quantized numbers in the ultraviolet catastrophe. So this showed that the average amount that an electron can absorb can only be equal to kT, which is the average energy of the atoms. So what that means in real life is that when you heat something up, for example, when I heated my black body radiator up, at the temperature I was at, I mostly had red light coming off of it. But a few atoms were letting off UV light, but there definitely wasn't a lot of UV light coming off of it like classical physics would have predicted. So Planck said that energy is equal to some integer times H, which is called Planck's constant times frequency. And N has to be a whole number. So N can be one, N can be two, N can be three, but it can't be 1.1 or 1.123. It has to be a whole integer. So the reason we don't notice this on a large scale is because of how small this Planck's constant is. H is actually 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. So this is an extremely small number. And what that means is that on a large scale, even though there all are these quantized energy levels, if you zoom out and look really far away, it basically just looks continuous. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and also hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.